Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... This episode was brought to you by The Mythwits, a geek pop culture talk show. Every week we interview an industry guest and make with the funny. Check us out at Mythwits.com, YouTube, and iTunes, and watch us live every Monday night at 9.30 p.m. EST. Souljar Games is the proud publisher of Dice Crawl and Torn Armor. Our company has been accident-free for 12 days. And by viewers like you. All right, can we dim the lights a bit? Let's start up the Robotech 30th anniversary preview at the New York Comic Con. Let me hear you, New York! All right, folks, it's like before. I want you guys to hold all of your questions because I have brought the Robotech mystery box. Ooh, and it's packed full of Robotech prizes because I'm Kevin McKeever. I'm Vice President of Marketing for the Robotech franchise. I am also Director of the Robotech Convention Tour. Well, I'm going to go through a presentation to update you on what's going on with the Robotech franchise. And then we will go and op open up to you what you have to say. So let's start with Robotech role-playing games. First off, as you know, the Robotech RPG Tactics has, has come out. We've raised over $1.4 million as part of a Kickstarter for Palladium Books. The Kickstarter was so successful that the miniatures that will be a part of this game include the Ghost Drone and the SDF-1, and is, is now in production, and now it is shipping for our Kickstarter backers. It should be coming out for the general public very, very soon. But a lot of people are now asking, well, Kevin, it's great you have the Robotech RPG Tactics Kickstarter, but what about Robotech Toys? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that the Robotech Toys, we have a new 1-100 scale toy line coming out from Toynami. And they are fully transformable VF-1 Veritech fighters. The first wave of this 1-100 scale uh, toy line will be out in the holiday season. And yes, we have super deformed battle pods that are on their way as part of a new line of super deformed toys. Yes. In fact, you can get some of these super deformed toys right now at the Toynami booth. They're only $15 each. And what we're doing is we're doing something interesting with these toy line. We're doing a, what's called a blind box, meaning you won't know which toy is inside the box. So we kind of expect sort of an interesting aftermarket. And as you can see from the artwork, we're not only going to have the Battle Pod, we're not going to have just Rick Hunter and Skull Leader, we're also going to have Destroids as well. So some Destroid loves coming out for you guys. Now, Here's the, toy, uh, here's the actual box artwork as well. Now, Robotech novelizations. As many of you know, the original 12 Robotech novels are available as, as part of the ebook platforms. You can now download them as part of your ebook legally. And also, what we've done is, because we've heard what you've said, a lot of you fans said, well, Kevin, you know, where's the end of the circle? Where's the Sentinels? Where's all the other Lost Generation? We're pleased to announce that also the Lost Generation novels, like the Centrati Rebellion, Robotech the Sentinels and Robotech before the Invid Store are, are now available as part of an as available excuse me, as part of the ebook platforms. You can buy them now. And of course, the controversial end of the circle. Yes. And what about Udon? Well folks, Udon has teamed up with us and we're gonna release art books for the 30th anniversary. So stay tuned for that. Yes, art books for the 30th anniversary. So what about animated Robotech? A lot of you are saying, well, Kev, that's all great, but what about animated Robotech? Well, I know a lot of you have been asking, well, in 2013, we released an OVA called Robotech Love Live Live. And we reunited, we reunited the entire cast of Robotech New Generation, and we made this little sort of what we call a retro TV teaser. Here it is. Check it out. Join us next time as Scott, Ran, Rook, Annie, Lunk, Ariel, and Lancer are reunited one last time. Be sure to watch Love Live Alive, the next dramatic chapter in the Robotech saga. Now you might remember that voice. That's the voice of the narrator. We found him. His name is John J. Smith, and everybody thought he was dead. He goes, no, I'm not dead. I'm quite alive. And as you can see, he, he recorded it for us. But now I know a lot of you are also asking, but Kev, you know, I've been following the anime industry over the past couple of years, 
And you know, the industry's been contracting, there's been a lot of problems. Who on earth is going to distribute Robotech Love Live Live? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have an excellent distributor, but I'm not gonna tell you who they are. Instead, folks, I'm going to show you. Why don't you watch that screen and you'll find out who it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Lionsgate. Yes, folks, it's Lionsgate. The same Lionsgate that distributes the incredible, the, the Expendables. Excuse me. Uh, it's been a long day at this convention, folks, as you can imagine. They distribute the Expendables. And yes, they distribute the Hunger Games. And yes, there's another Hunger Games coming out soon. Yep. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they distribute Twilight. <laughs> Executive in the office, folks. Kind of, but actually, to be fair, look, I know Twilight engenders a strong reaction amongst us, but there's one thing I want to say about Lionsgate is that, you know, they view Robotech just like it's a Twilight or it's a Hunger Games or it's an Expendables. That's how awesome they are, and we're really proud to be a part of them. And Lionsgate has put together a uh, two minute clip of Robotech Love Love Alive. Would you like to see it? Yeah. All right, well, here it is. remembering running home from school to catch the next episode of Robotech, right? Well, you can find this now on the 20-disc box set from Lionsgate. It includes not only Robotech Love, Love Alive, but all 85 episodes of the original series, and Robotech the Shadow Chronicles, and Robotech the Sentinels, and Robotech the Untold Story, on top of 12 hours of bonus features. Now you're probably thinking, my god, Kevin, this sounds so expensive. But you want to know something? You can go buy it on Amazon right now for like 40 bucks. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? But you know what, folks? This is sold so well. Demand for Robotech has grown so much that Lionsgate is going to release the original Robotech as it originally aired in 1985, plus the original SDF Macross in Japanese as well as part of a special edition, limited edition box set. You can buy this right now on Amazon. This is available exclusively only through Amazon. And this is a demand-driven run, so the more this sells, the more of the original Japanese shows you'll be able to see as well. But what about Robotech Comics? You know, folks, back at Anime Expo last year, we showed this image. And a lot of people went, Yarrr. 
And people went, you know, wait, what Rob Robotech comics? This is different. What's Roy doing with this eye patch? Well, people began speculating, and we answered what this was going to be with this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever Robotech Voltron crossover from Dynamite Comics. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Kevin, Robotech Voltron crossover, we're taking two of the greatest anime shows of the 1980s and giving you the three things that makes them awesome. That means we're giving you monsters and robots, mullets, and of course, mice. Yes. But we began to notice something, though, too, as you know, and, you know when we, we announced this last year, you know, someone pointed out, they said, well, it's not worth drinking yet. I mean, you can drink after the panel. Come on, folks. <laughs> you know, one thing we pointed out was, you know, someone pointed out to us, said, Kevin, you know, this is going to come out for the Voltron uh, 30th anniversary. And we went, yeah, you're right. And you know something, something interesting, too, happened is that Toynami has not only the rights to Robotech, but also the toy rights to Voltron. And they've done a beautiful, folks, I've seen this, this thing is awesome, the beautiful 30th anniversary Lion Voltron NPC set. Guys, it's available from Voltron.com, it is awesome. Even I'm impressed, and I'm a huge vehicle Voltron fan, and even I'm impressed with the Lion Voltron toy, I want one. And fans began talking all over the world. Almost like, and they were starting to buzz, not just in America, but in Latin America, and even China. And we began to realize we are on the cusp. This Robotech Voltron crossover is like a world event. And, you know, if we're gonna do a world event, I might as well bring somebody up here from World Events Productions. So, ladies and gentlemen, I believe he's in the audience here somewhere, I'd like to bring up the Vice President of World Events Productions. Please welcome Bob Cutler. Folks, how many of you here grew up in New York City? Right. It's like you're running home and watching Robotech or Voltron on channel WPIX Channel 11, is it not? Yeah. How's that, folks? All right. Bob? Yes. It is great to have you it's up here. It's great to be here, Kevin. I know. Thanks isn't it? I know. Well, thanks for having thanks, well, thanks for working with us. Folks, how many of you have been uh, read the Robotech Voltron comics? Okay, well, but as you can see, folks, let's talk about this for a second here. You know, we have some awesome artwork. This is the cover artwork by Tommy Yoon. And as you can see, you know, incredible artwork. And also, we hired an excellent artist. His name is Elmer Damaso. And Elmer has given a great manga sort of look to Robotech and Voltron. And Bob, feel free to chime in here since we got some beautiful Voltron art going here. Yeah. Um you know, when, when uh, we had the idea to combine and do a crossover comic, we've never done a crossover with any other properties, but we've been friends for some time, and it's tough to do these crossovers sometimes because just the way the rights work out, it's, you, you know, all the business terms gets complicated, but we said, screw all that, let's, you know, we're good friends, we love each other's brand, let's find a way to make this work, and, uh, you know, it's, it's challenging, there's two different universes, uh, Robotech being based on Earth and, and us being based on Eris had to find a way to make those worlds meld. Tommy Yoon did such a phenomenal job um, making that story work and blending the two universes. And the artwork, folks, is utterly spectacular. I mean, it's, I'd put it up against anything. Um, I mean, just the colors, the, the line work. Elmer Damaso, our artist, um, you know, 
he does mech so well and also people so well, it's hard to find if, artists. If I could tie into some of what Bob was just saying, when, when the original artwork like this came in, even we were stunned. I was stunned because, you know, we've all seen comics from you know, anime properties not doing well. I was just stunned at how well this came out. And just to give you an idea of how much detail we're putting into this, you know, you might notice here we have Pop Hunter right here, and here's behind him is Roy Foker, and if you might notice a little Tweety. If you remember Robotech, the graphic novel, what, what did, what did uh, Pop Hunter fly in a Tweety Bird biplane? So, and as you can see, folks, another little point too here, we talk about mind, you know, melding the sort of the magical aspects of Voltron and the sort of harder version of Robotech. You might, it's a little tough to see, but right here we have Roy, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, Dan, Dan Foker, which is a little subtle to uh, Dan Warren, the voice actor of Roy Foker, and you know, uh, Richard Hunter and Pop Hunter, and as you can see over here too, back up here, just the beautiful artwork. You can just see, just really, really good. And we're really happy to work with our friends here at World Events. As Bob has mentioned, we have, we have been friends for years and we had to pretend we hated each other. So now but we can actually be publicly friends, which is awesome. And we always welcome the, Ro the Voltron fans who are here. We welcome the Robotech fans who are here because we know there's a lot of crossover between the two properties. And as you can see, we've added even more to help bring out. Here's a booster for the Lion Voltron. This is one of my favorite covers, too. As you can see, the, uh, yeah. the Black Tommy Lion. Tommy Yoon did all the covers. Yeah, Tommy did the cover. This artwork's by Tommy Yoon. Here's the cover of issue number four. Note, you might notice Voltron. Note the symbol on Voltron's chest. And here's some of the interior artwork. Here's the SDF-1 as it's over, over planet Eris. And here's the final issues cover. And note, note we have Rick Hunter, Keith, and note how their helmets have switched with them. So folks, that's it. That's what's going on. I want to hear what you have to say because we have a Rubjik mystery box. And folks, if you want to ask questions because Bob's up here about Voltron, I encourage you to do so. Because folks, it's, you only turn 30 once. And we're going to turn three next year. So, <laughs> so if you want to ask questions about Voltron, please do. Folks, there's a microphone right over there. And you ask a question, you'll get a prize out of the mystery box. And my lovely assistant will come up there and uh, give you a prize. So if you want to ask a question, please bring up the lights. Sir, you're the first one there at the microphone. So let's hear what you have to say. Oh, um, since sorry. it's the 30th anniversary, are we going to get the perfect soundtrack again? Uh, for Voltron or Robotech? For Robotech. Uh, we're working on a soundtrack right now, but also the Voltron soundtrack is available right now as well. So it is indeed. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, go go over to go over to Voltron.com to order that, and then you'll hear more about the 30th Robotech uh, anniversary soundtrack later on. Yes. Um, given that um, many anime properties have been made into movies, why has there not been a Voltron live-action movie? I, that's what I'm asking. I, I agree. There there will be one. I just can't say when, and that's about all I can say, so we're working on it. You know, if I, if I could add something to this too, because this is, we're over dinner, we always talk about this, because fans always ask us, where's the Voltron live action Robotech, where's the Robotech live action movie? Why aren't there a Robotech and Voltron live action movie? Folks, Hollywood development is very, very difficult. It takes a long time to work, to work on this, and it's important, whether it's Voltron or Robotech, that you get the story right. We all, want, we all want Voltron or Robotech, and Robotech actually, to be successful. And to do that, we have to have a good story with good characters. Character, character, character. And that's why it takes so long. Okay, sir, you're up next. Um, when you guys do the movie, could you, it's more of a statement. When okay. you guys do the movie, please make it a shared universe. I'm sorry, make it what? A shared universe. Do a crossover okay. movie? No, I just mean just make it a shared universe. Just have somebody say something about Voltron. Say something about oh, okay. Kind of have it, have it uh, uh, consistent it across. Okay, that's an interesting. Okay, idea. that's an interesting idea. Kind of hint to each other. I can accept payment for that. Okay, <laughs> sir. Hi. Um, considering the relatively lackluster uh, reception of Love Live Live, and also the PR disaster that is the actual Robotech RPG Tactics game. Are you guys concerned about the actual future uh, of both, pro uh, both properties, especially considering Voltron is still relatively untainted and its crossover with Robotech could result in it actually being brought down? Did you see the Voltron panel today? No, actually, I... Are you saying it's untainted because I saw two Voltrons kiss? 
No, I'm not on brand. No, I'm saying on CNN. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. Two ball trying to stick kids, by the way. But, well, that's good. That's the but, but, I mean, when, when you say Robotech Level of Live was, was, was lackluster reception, what do you mean by that? The reason why I asked that is because Lionsgate told us it sold extremely well, and that's why they, you know, they had to expand the, the, the demand for Robotech actually increased. So I just want, when you say lackluster, what do you mean? Can you be a little talking, more specific? I'm talking the post-purchase reviews. The actual like reviews on uh, Amazon and other places, the reviews are, it's it's either very positive or very negative, but there's a, there seems to be a lot heavier emphasis on the negative rather than the positive. It's a pull, it's, we knew it was an experimental film, that's right. why we did Rope to Love, Love, Alive. We knew that some fans were really gonna like it, and we knew that some fans were really gonna hate it. It doesn't matter what, what we think per se of what people think of Love of Life matters you the fan because you're the final consumer that's what matters to us we viewed it as an experiment it was a successful experiment in that it showed that people want to see these more side stories in the Robotech universe now going on I'm just going to jump into the Robotech RPG tactics game for a second it's starting to ship now right so, so I know I was part of the Kickstarter you're right? part of the I, Kickstarter I've been thoroughly you know, man covering manufacturing it. toys or miniatures it takes a long 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 time right I mean it's you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. Even Kevin realized, my gosh, there's a lot more difficulty manufacturing this stuff than, than, he, than even he realized. But I think fans are going to be really impressed when they finally see the actual miniatures. I'm just saying in regards to the actual PR communications that have been between Ninja Division, Palladium Books, and, their, and the, mm -hmm. the Kickstarter backers, and the actual general public has been, it has been a disaster. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried that that's a case of because it does re represent the actual Rope Tech property and is involved very tightly with Harmony Gold, that this will actually become a wicked this, backlash. This is a great question. What's your name, my friend? Uh, Dave Simpson. I'm from Gamers on Games. Okay, Dave. Dave, great question. I'm glad you asked it. I'm not really so much worried about that because the Rope Tech franchise has grown, has gotten so much stronger that even some of the issues, and I agree, there have been issues the way things were communicated with the, with the game and updates and whatnot. The Rope Tech franchise can can survive, grow, and prosper. That's part of being a franchise. There are ups, and let's face it, sadly there are downs too. So I understand, Dave. I appreciate your concern. I will make sure to pass that along to the appropriate people. And my lovely assistant will make sure you get some excellent prizes too. Thank okay. you very much, Dave. I Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dave. The great question. All right, sir. Next question. Yeah, I'm uh, really excited to, to see in here today that you guys are, re are releasing smaller versions of the Veritech fighters, but one version of the of the Robotech toys that I'm a huge fan of which came out about 15, maybe even 20 years ago, were the Robotech Masterpieces, much larger size by Toyinami, the Veritech Fighters, Cyclone. The, the Masterpiece Collections, yeah, yes. Yeah, they were awesome, and they've been like long since reproduced, and I'm just curious of like, is there any, any movement on trying to make more of them, or at the very least, even re-release them since they've been right, out of... Out of right order. now, the toy market has changed. See, the Voltron Masterpiece, there's a huge demand for it because there hasn't been one. But for Robotech, there's already been the Masterpiece Collections. The toy market, because of the recession, has broken apart into two aspects. Either it's the $2,000 collectible, or you get like the 1100 scale affordable toys. That's what fans want. Either it's one or the other. And the Masterpiece for, for Robotech, because they've run through their first product cycle, they're sort of stuck in that economic limbo of, of just... You know the problem is too, when the Masterpiece first started, you know how much the oil cost? It costs about $60 a barrel. How much it costs today? $100 a barrel. So that ups the cost too, and it's like we're seeing that fans have a little trouble in this tough economic environment, which I'm sure we all know, of trying to trying to afford it. So fans want more of the uh, affordable toys. George is aware of it. He's up here. George has a booth, by the way, and we encourage you all to go visit him. You can talk to him about Voltron, talk to him about Robotech. Tell him what you want to see. He definitely wants to hear from you. So our, my lovely assistant has some prizes for you. Cool. And uh, next question, Thank please. You. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm uh, doing great. I am a long-suffering Robotech fan. Uh, a lot of, yeah, come on, come on. Yep. Okay. Speak truth to power, speak truth to power, honestly. Uh, what's going on? Uh, I come here, and you're telling me about Voltron. And I'm, I'm here for Robotech, and to hear what's going on with Robotech, especially after what happened with the Kickstarter, you know? Uh, I mean, last year, you guys showed up, and you showed a clip of something that looked like it was related to a Shadow Chronicles, and that was coming in the works. Didn't hear anything about that. Next thing I know, there's something called Robotech Academy. Great. Anything. Just give me something. Now, you're not mentioning anything about the future of Robotech, and you're showing me some comic books. Point blank. What is the future of Robotech as an animated series? Yeah. What is the future of Robotech as an animated series? Please okay. give me something, and not a roundabout 
whatever. Because I, you know, oh, no, I'm but, so tired. <laughs> well, I don't want you to be tired. I mean, I'm look, exhausted. You're exhausted. Okay. And it's not con. It's just. No, no. I understand. I understand. What's your name? Ozzy. You see me here every year. Man. Oh, Ozzy. But still, it's a it's a valid question you're asking, Ozzy. I'm glad you asked. That. First off, just so you know, because I'm really glad you asked this question, I'm going to give you a one of one thousand. Oh, Valkyrie. Thank you. See? So, you know, just letting you know, this is a great question, Ozzy. I'm glad you asked it. So, here we go. So, first off, why do we have Voltron up here? Because we're doing, as you can see, the 30th, uh, it's the, the Rope Tape Voltron crossover. It's really important. And, and we've been friends for many years. And as if I could steal a good line here from Bob, you know, combine and conquer. So that's one of the things we want to do, because there's a lot of overlap between our fandoms. And we're very honored to have Bob up here. He's been a friend for many years and has really helped us too. And Bob and you know, World Events also promoted the Kickstarter. Now, we want to talk about the Kickstarter for a second. So let me set the stage so people know what we're talking about. The Kickstarter is a reference to, call it up here, is a reference to something called Robotech Academy. And you're saying, Kevin, what do you mean, what Robotech Academy? What's that? We did a Kickstarter earlier this year for Robotech Academy. This was one of Carl's final projects that he did. He submitted to us in 2008. And because the animation is so difficult to produce, and a lot of fans after the, the RPG Kickstarter was so successful, they said to us, why don't you guys do a Kickstarter? And we said, this is a good, good way to do it and not impact other aspects of the Robotech franchise. So we began doing a lot of artwork, as you can see here for Robotech Academy. Robotech Academy would take people to Phantoma and Tyrol, which would allow us to explore the Sentinels. You see, Ozzy, this is something important. We talk about the Sentinels for a minute. A lot of fans want to see the Sentinels. The problem is there's a lot of hurdles to make the Sentinels because it's been to the story's been told in novels, it's been told in the comics. But we said if we take Robotech Academy, and Carl's idea was we could explore the Sentinels era through Robotech Academy, that would be a good way to do it. Now, the Kickstarter didn't work. We needed $500,000, and we only raised $200,000. But the good thing is, Ozzy, and this is what I'll tell you about this, is that this was a very obscure project. Only very few people knew about it. Now we're able to take it, because this profile's been raised so much, and start going through a traditional Hollywood funding method to hopefully fund Robotech Academy and bring it out to you, the fans. This is on top of Shadow Rising. And on top of some other projects that we're working on as well. I know it's frustrating, Ozzy. I share your frustration. I'm the marketing guy. I come up here and like, you know, try to do this stuff. I want you watching Robotech. I don't want you to be tired. I want you to be excited. Me too. So I know it's frustrating. I know there's some things going on. You can better believe it, Ozzy. Sometimes I scream the same things you scream too. And you can rest yes. assured, Ozzy, I will take that back to our chairman and CEO, Frank Agram, and he will know exactly what you said. And I thank you for uh, expressing your concern. Is there anything else you have to add? Well, no, it's just like, we're getting tired, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta give us something. I will give you something. I promise you that, Ozzy. Thank you, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you, Ozzy. Next question. Seeing that well, your, uh, you know, 30th anniversary is uh, dawning next year, I kind of noticed uh, maybe like late last year that Robotech uh, has been absent from Netflix and so forth, and wondering, I'm wondering since the 30th anniversary is, uh, you know, nearby, are you going to start ramping up in terms of spinning up the old catalog for people to just start, uh, you know, binging on a on a lonely weekend in their, you know, the confines of their own home? This is a great question. What's your name? Diego. Diego, this is a great question. The rights for Netflix expired. That's why it was on Netflix and it flew off. Now it's, it's reverted back to to uh, to to A and E, and we're working with A and E to find out the best way to bring it back onto Netflix. You know, because there's that sort of thing when people want to see Robotech in that thing called high definition. Here's the problem: it's on 16 millimeter film. No, I I get yeah. it. I mean, it yeah. Was... So, but the thing is that when you bring it up to high definition standards, you yeah. From 16 millimeter, yeah, you have to. Click. It's like it's really, it's like really expensive. And while some fans will say, "Well, Kevin, I'll pay $500 for a Macross DVD," yeah, but very few fans. Who here wants to pay $500 for a DVD set? That's oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, Bob will. Okay, great. But um, but you know, it's really tough to do, and you know, it's it's something we're, we're trying to explore to bring it back. So if we want to bring it back on Netflix. We want to bring it back right. That's the key thing. Because right. we, we agree with you. Because when it was on Netflix, a lot of new fans discovered Robotech through Netflix. And I was, I was it, it was designed for it. Yeah, I was in the midst of binging through the, the series, and then all of a sudden, I find it missing from my queue. So, yeah. just wondering we're, we're, we're working on that. We're well aware of that, Diego. Thank you very much. Okay, next question, please. How are you doing? Hi, doing guys. excellent. What's, uh, what's that? Doing excellent. What's your question, sir? Oh, thanks. 
Uh, I'm a huge fan of Robotech from way back in the day, and you, know, you described it perfectly. Running home right after school oh, to, uh, to get home and catch the uh, the newest episodes, um, and I was a really huge fan of the Comico comic books that came out, uh, you know, back in the mid '80s. Is there any is there any plans to bring Robotech back into regular comic books? Um, you know, anytime in the near future, be beyond the. Beyond as well, I've well, read the that. The good thing uh, is, the good thing is, because Robotech Voltron was a success, there's a lot more demand for Robotech comics now. Great. So you know, it's like a lot, I know a lot of fans were sort of crunching. Robotech Voltron, are you nuts? But the thing was, it said, "Hey, people will buy to see Robotech, and they'll buy money to see Voltron." So there's definitely some, a lot more interest now to make more Robotech comics, particularly now with the new emerging digital platforms, your tablet devices. That's going to be the future of comics in our view, and that's something we definitely want to explore. It's still evolving, but we're working on it right now. In fact, just so you know, you can get the entire Robotech Voltron series of Comixology. You can digitally download it, too. It's the first Robotech, and I think the first Voltron comic ever that's allowed that, too. Great question. Thanks. And then not to let, you know, not to have Bob feel left out. Bob, is there any, any plans for Voltron? The, you said you were a vehicle... Uh, Voltron fan, is there any plans to bring that back into the fold? Yeah, Can where's vehicle? vehicle? Where's vehicle Voltron, yeah, Bob? I know, I know. Where did we... We'd love to do something with vehicle. We're, we're looking at plans for both Lion and vehicle. Um, we haven't had a vehicle comic in yeah. forever. So, yeah, yeah. Um, great point. And there's a lot of vehicle demand. I, I hear from vehicle fans every day wanting more vehicle stuff. Um, you know, we, I hear you. We want to get it out there. It's Because it's a great show. Great. Really Thanks. Is. Thanks, guys. Just, just so you know, when I first met Bob, virtually the first words out of my mouth was, I understand Lion Voltron's more popular, but I'm a huge fan of Vehicle Voltron. Where is it? Okay, just so you know, he can't escape it. So, I understand, but thank you, great question. Next question, sir. Hey, how you doing? I'm Excellent. also tired, but just from the convention. But <laughs> okay. Guys. Uh, just, I have a two-part question. Um, when, if you do get a uh, funding for a new line of Toyonami toys, will, will there be any love for Southern Cross, like the hover tanks? It was kind of missing that when that came out. Let let George know. George son up at the Toynami booth. He's here. Let him know you want to see uh, the Southern Cross uh, toys to be made. Okay. It's all about it's all about demand. People want to make stuff that's demand. Now you mentioned about new Robotech toys. Before you go, sir. Before you go, sir, I'm going to give you a little uh, surprise here. We have something a little wrapped here in our, in our mystery box. I'm going to give you one of the super deformed. Toys. Hey, thanks. But you have to unwrap it to find out what it is. Right. But you can buy these from Toynami for fifteen dollars at the booth. So okay. there you go. Okay. Uh, second, I had a second yes. question. Oh, well, go ahead. Would you ever consider offshoot uh, TV cartoon version of Lonk and Annie trying to find the last mints on Earth? Right. Ever consider it? What? Like an offshoot cartoon, just like a comedic duo with Annie and Lonk. Trying oh, to, Annie and Lunk? Trying to find the last mints on Earth. If you, leave, if, you, if you watch Robotech Love, Love, Alive, you'll find out what happens to Annie and Lunk. Oh, okay. oh yes. So. It is, is quite funny, by the way, too. So, Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to know how did it come to be the whole Voltron and Robotech collaboration? Um, yeah, I mean, like we were saying earlier, it just kind of grew out of uh, our friendship with Kevin. We've known the Harmony Gold guys for a long time, and... Uh, and it, it was just literally, I think at Comic-Con one year, came out of a conversation, hey, what if we did a crossover of the Voltron and, and Robotech worlds? Wouldn't that be cool? And then we took that to uh, Dynamite Entertainment, the uh, publisher that released the books, and, and they thought it was a great idea, too. And, you know, like I mentioned, we, we love working with each other, so we were able to get the rights deal done pretty quickly and easily. Yeah, it quite literally was here at New York Comic-Con. Jeremy Correa and I were having a hot dog out in the corner outside. And that's where this, this sort of this comic series was actually born. It was back in 2012. So you never know what happens at Comic Con, do you? Yes. So great question, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Uh, hey, Kevin. Um, been attending Robotech panel since Anime Boston 2005. Um, I bring that up because a few years back, uh, and even a little further back, you did mention because people have asked, are Robotech comic books going to come back out? Are there going to be any new ones? I know at the time you were skeptical of the comic book market, so my question is, is uh, what, what was it that pushed Harmony Gold to take a risk with the Voltron um, and Robotech crossover in the comic book format? This is a great question. What's your name? James. James? Yeah, that's an awesome question. You get a Hayao Kakazaki one of 1,000. There we go. Okay. 
just let me set the stage so everyone knows the same Kevin, you said you were skeptical. What's happened with comic books, despite we have comic book movies doing very, very well, comics themselves are doing quite poorly. Their sales have been quite poorly. They've been in steep, steep decline for many, many years. So what was a concern was for from our, our our license or DC Comics, well, you know, how are we gonna get this out? We don't want to have a whole bunch of comics that don't sell because people aren't buying them. But as I mentioned before, what helped make this help make this happen was when we worked with Bob was the fact it was Robotic Voltron. As you saw during my presentation, fans all over the planet were talking about it. Bob's been get, get the Voltron sites, but all the Robotic fans from China have been coming onto the Voltron page, finding out what Voltron is. And all the Voltron fans have been coming over, as you see some of them are here tonight helping us out, they've all been coming over to the Robotech page, finding out what it is and realizing, hey, we can all be friends. And that's what we want to do. You know, folks, despite what you may think, I want Bob to do well, I want Voltron to do well, both lion and vehicle, and, <laughs> And Bob wants Robotech to do well. I want Southern Cross. He wants Southern Cross, man. See, you Southern Cross fans have... Uh, by the way, Kevin, I agree with you about the vehicle force. Okay. It's always been my favorite. Okay, see. Noted, thank you. Yeah, yeah. see. But th there you go. And that's the thing. With the new digital platforms, we're able to reach more people now at, at less cost and hopefully make more comics. The digital platforms, the tablet platforms are the future of comics. Sir, the Punisher shirt. What's your question? Well, I, I've been a Robotech fan for the longest. And I'm actually collecting the Masterpiece series. Okay. I gotta find, hunt every single one of them on eBay, like two, three, four hundred dollars. I wanna know why was there never one Hover Tank made? It's like, it was completely glossed over. It's like you went from the beginning to the end. A couple cycles, but it's just disregarded. Like, how bad did it actually go? I'm sorry, what was the last part of the question? How bad was that? Like, how bad did it actually go? The hover tank never was released. No, I know it never was released, but I'm saying why was it never released? Why was it not even? Because when, when, when a couple of things, when people look at demand, and this ties into what I think Bob says about vehicle Voltron, because why isn't there a vehicle Voltron? Why isn't there a hover tank? And I, I mentioned this today, is that earlier today, is that people say, you know what? I want a hover tank, but I really want a VF1. Or I want a hover tank, but I really love to have a cyclone, the cyclone NPCs. And I'm sure some of you have seen, those are awesome. But here's the problem. As the cyclones were coming out, there's this thing called the financial crisis happened. Some of you may remember us here at the, at the New York Anime Festival in 2008. Just down the street, the stock market was dropping 800 points per day. And, and people were wondering whether or not they're going to have a job next week. And even though the cyclone still sold out, the economy has weakened so much. As I mentioned before, it's very difficult to do that $800 toy right now. For some reason, fans want the cheaper toys or they want that $2,000 high-end super collectible. It's really tough. What I suggest is George Sun is here. Talk to him. He wants to hear from you. Trust me. Tell him I sent you, okay? That way he'll roll his eyes, and, but he knows. And tell him, look, you want a hover tank toy. There's a couple other people who are here who said, I want a hover tank toy. George Sun of Toynami is here. Tell him. Say, you can tell him I sent you and say, I want a hover tank toy. Kevin has sent me. He said he's sending me to you. And let him know that you, because if you take the time to go talk to him, he'll tell you how to make, he tells you how to make toys. He'll tell you about all the issues that, that are involved. He's more than happy to talk to you. He's really good with fans. He wants to hear from you. And I want you to, I want you to tell him what you want to see. Because it all comes down to supply and demand. It's like with Vehicle Voltron. I love Vehicle Voltron. I ran home from school every day to watch the Voltron Power Hour on WTIC Channel 61 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's how I discovered Robotech. It's from Vehicle Voltron. That's how much I love the show. That's how, how weird connections these are. But I know, and I told this to Bob, I said, Bob, you know I'm a huge Vehicle Voltron fan, but I understand that Lion Voltron is just more popular. And when licensors want to make stuff, they're going to go with Lion first. But when there's Vehicle Voltron, please let me know, and I will help you promote it. So I, I appreciate your, your, your question. It's a great question. So. Yeah. Did all the masterpieces not sell out? They've sold out on the Robotech.com site. You can find them what's called the secondary market. Which is like eBay. Yeah, the, yeah like eBay or, or like a toy store may have, may have some. But I've noticed that they're way above MSRP. Where they go for 80 bucks, now they're going for 100 150 160 dollars. Because, because the runs have ended. The, amount, the, the actual production runs have ended. Let George know. Let no, I'm serious. Let George know. He's here. You want hover tanks? Let George know you want a hover tank. So when he walks out of here, I'll say is that your Comic Con must produce hover tank. See, that's what you should do. Great question, sir. Next question. Uh, uh, mine has to do with toys. And uh, I can't 
GI Joe have a 25 year action figure coming out. We're going up to 30 years with our Robotech. Is there any chance we're going to see figures or any of the toys, even uh, combined with uh, Voltron? Well, we have new toys, the Super Deformed toys coming out, and they'll be out later this year. So we have those, we have the 1 100 scale toys that are transformable, those will be out. The, the first wave of them will be out later this year as well. Did you, did you miss the presentation? Yeah, yeah see, no, yeah, no. And you can buy, just so you know, just letting you know, you can buy the super deformed Skull Leader at the Toynami booth right now for 15 bucks. No, they say it's coming out in December. No, he has a few. Yeah. He has a few. Tomorrow, go to Toynami, you buy, you buy this and then say, I want a hover tank. <laughs> okay, good, excellent. Okay, yes. I saw when you mentioned the, uh, they're going to re release the original Mad Cross series. You said there was going to be the Japanese version in there too. I was under the impression that there's been legal issues going on for like decades. Yes. Did something get settled there? That, that was well, no, we own the rights to SDF Macross. Oh. So we can release the original Macross on DVD from Lionsgate for, for, with, with no problem. It's just for the Macross sequels, the legal issues between between the Japanese are such that it's yeah, it's the it's the bottomless pit. It's yeah, it's it's a real mess and it's difficult. But I, you're waiting, so here we go. Great questions, by the way, folks. I'm running out of prizes too. Uh oh, yes. Hold it. We have to, we have a little technical difficulty here. Yes? You didn't get a prize? You didn't get a prize? Well, that's not good. Well, you know what? While you're waiting for your prize, I'm going to give you two calendars. All right? And I'm going to give you a mouse pad. How's that sound? So you can press all your friends at work. All right. That's your question, sir. Uh, I only just found about out at the uh, te technical RPG about a week ago. Didn't see the Kickstarter or anything. But I'm really big into like battle tech and stuff. And I see that they had a uh, Rick Hunter unit that was an exclusive to uh, backers. Are there going to be any like releases for units like that in the future? Maybe for like his squad mates and stuff. If the if the if the RPG tactics sells well, the sky's the limit. For, for, for things, some back, just so you know, sir, there are obviously some things for backer exclusives, but if it's selling well, you can rest assured that, that, that uh, they'll be able to make it, because obviously the, the molds are all there, but the backers have to be taken care of first, as I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. Great. Okay, we still have a lot of questions, so lightning round. Yes, sir, you're up next. Yes, um, I remember in college, I had actually bought the paperback version of End of the Circle, and I loved it. Also, I had seen Robotech the movie down in Houston Street at the New York Film Forum. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, one with the end of the circle, I, was, I became a fan of secondary characters like um, Marie Cristo. If I remember, she piloted the helicopter fighter. Ajax. I was wondering if you could also um, talk, talk about... Um, Ajax. The Ajax fighter. Yes. You know, this is a great question. I have to give it really quick. We were digging through our legal, legal, Harmony Gold Legal was digging through contracts and they found a line art of how the Ajax fighter transforms. Matchbox was considering building a transformable Ajax fighter and was put into the legal contracts. We couldn't find the artwork, and so we forwarded it to George Sun. You want an Ajax fighter? Talk to George Sun on the Toynami booth and say, I want, I, I want an Ajax fighter, a hover tank, and where's vehicle Voltron, yeah. okay? Yeah, uh, Bob, one thing. I identify with the Lion Voltron, love the vehicle one, but can you try to also br bring something about the Gladiator Voltron? <laughs> I'll Vegas. No, uh, we actually, I mean, that, that show was something that uh, our company looked at uh, making, and it just, it, it never hit the airwaves, obviously, and, um, you know, we should do a Gladiator Voltron, though, down the road. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my, my old neighborhood cool. actually had a, a Gladiator Voltron toy when yeah. I was watching yeah. the... Uh, I think it was called Voltron was 3 or something. No, no Voltron, uh, of the Voltron Middle Universe. The, yeah. the, That's right. Gladiator was Voltron 2, yeah. 1 was the vehicle, and 3 was the lions. Yeah. 
Thank you for correcting me, actually. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Only on Robotech panel. Great question, sir. Yes. We have, we have short time, so keep them short, folks. Yeah, I just want to say I'm glad that you got the novels back. And I was wondering, with the rich library of comics, if it's possible to reprint those, specifically the non-comico stuff. We are looking into that. Uh, we're trying to find a license right now to reprint it. We're trying to find out the best way to do it. Do we put it on a CD or DVD, or do we do it like like a just download? Through, through we're comicology. looking into that. It's a great question. Next question to the, the lovely with the lovely plushie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I know I'm kind of neat, but this is a general question. I don't want any fans to come out and jump at me. Um, I know there's a lot of fans in here and a lot of series, but I was wondering in the future, it's a general question, do you plan to do like a little something, bring something different to either to the series of Voltron and Robotech, like giving the familiar feel, but something different that can both appeal both the younger generation and the older fans? I'll, I'll go first and Bobby, if you want to chime in, feel free. Uh, yes, we want to have stuff. Frank Agrama, the owner of our company, is very adamant that Robotech, we have stuff for the older fans, such as you here, but also something for the new younger fans as well. And uh, we're, we're, we're looking at, at ideas right now. We can't go into it too much right now, because when you do development in Hollywood, you don't talk a lot about it. But it's a great point, ma'am. I'm glad you brought that up. Bob, if you want to add something? I think that's absolutely right. I mean, you can't do the same thing over and over and over again, or people are just going to get sick of it. You have to keep reinventing while staying true to the DNA of the brand. So it's, it's, a, it's the challenge of maintaining the essence of what the property is and what it stands for, but exploring new territory and, and taking it in different directions. And, you know, that's, that's always the challenge creatively. Um, so, you know, that's just the balance you have to strike. Is Okay, time for one. We have one more question, folks. I have to, I, I know, because they're, they're going to throw us out. And mm -hmm. Sir, final question. Sure, first I have a quick statement or a suggestion. Can you possibly make like how the Gundams have like a buildable model, maybe for the Robotech series? Is it possible? The modeling market in North America is very, very small. So what we're doing is we're doing the miniatures, and they're built like models. You'll be able to paint them. So it's a good way if you want to, if you're modeling fix for Robotech, it's a great way to do it. So, and my, my other general question would be, can we get like another Robotech video game sometime in the near future? We're exploring video game rights right now. So, you know. All right. I know, we, we, want, we, want more Ro we want more Robotech, and yes, I want more Voltron video games too. So, folks, we have to wrap it up. Thank you so much. I know some of you didn't get asked questions. Please come up here. I got some prizes for you. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your show.